um, for this exhibition space. I'm planning on this one and a half tons of clay. And I'm thinking that over here, covering the floor with clay, maybe not all of it, maybe this corner. And uh, letting it dry out, quickly dry so it cracks and resembles uh, the earth. A very common sight out in the dry, arid um, landscape of my hometown. So, yeah, the whole show is uh, my memories of clay. I don't have much experience with clay. I used it about 20 years ago. Uh, it's not a medium I use in my art practice, uh, but I thought it's uh, an exchange with him and I'll um, have a hacking approach, uh, the medium of clay. And I thought I'll just think about all my associations with clay that I've had or memories I've had. And that's one of the landscape of. Um, Tara, where I'm from, in Queensland, Australia. Um, and then I also thought of maybe over there in that corner I'll have the uh, tire track imprint in the clay. Um, so I'm just going to lay out uh, a section of clay and I've got a tractor tire. I'm going to press it into the clay and leave the impression of a tractor tire print. So I remember when I was quite young, I would find those and I used to be a bit fascinated with the tread pattern and playing it with my toy cars and stuff. So, um, I remember picking them up, bits, chunks and playing with that smooth pattern that the, the tread would make as well. So, sort of a, Aesthetic thing, uh, or looks some sort of dialogue I had with the pattern when I was younger, even I think maybe um, artistically minded back then. And what else do I have uh, planning to do? <laughs> I've got a clay pipe, a white clay pipe. I'm thinking on this brick wall somewhere. Not sure yet, things could. The configuration of the whole circuit change, but I thought that might look nice on that brick wall, or maybe I could use the table. Um, so I have a memory of finding um, a white clay pipe in my father's briefcase or something, and it was broken. And I remember asking about it and he wouldn't tell me what it was about. But I um, got Matthew Johnson to buy one uh, from eBay. Before I came over, I saw one was on eBay. It was very similar to the one I remember. And um, it's got the Royal Antilubian Order of Buffalo um, acronym on the pipe, which my father was a member of that. Uh, secret society and I looked online and I saw that the, the reason why it was broken was um, it's part of the initiation or um, part of a ritual for new initiates into the into the um, club so I'm going to break this one and maybe on the wall on the table but I think uh, being a secret society, it also has, I thought this pipe will also have connotations of secrets of my father as well. Because I'm not sure if he is my father or was, he's now dead. Um, and he had secrets from a previous uh, relationship, uh, pretty horrible ones, I think. But so yeah, sort of relates to family secrets as well. And I've also brought with me 
uh, a perfume of clay. A perfume of, um, I had a solo show in Sydney. Uh, when was it? Last, end of last year, I think. Um, I had 11 cents made by um, a perfumer, and which made up seven memories of mine. And one of those memories was my father again. And that was, I had a perfume of wood fire smoke and a perfume of clay, like in the ground, because he used to be an earth mover making dams and the roads and stuff. And if we, you'd get down to a certain level of the ground and this clay and would come up this earthy smell. Um, so I've got that bottle to display somewhere with uh, business card pieces of paper so you can spray it on the paper and have a smell. I'm going to have some lyrics on the wall as well, which may be a stencil. Um, I'm going to rub clay over a stencil so it will be just um, clay coloured text on the wall. From um, this English band called VV. And it's my favourite, well, most of my favourite bands are from post punk era from Britain. Um, and the singer songwriter from VV, his name's Matthew Johnson. These uh, lyrics were kind of stuff that appealed to me, uh, spoke to me when I was growing up. So from 1978, early 80s. So, so I've got selected a couple of lines and I have crossed that wall, maybe across that wall. And that's about it for the, a lot of my works to do with memory as well, and identity. Um, so being an Aboriginal Australian, um, there's lots of issues with race and identity. Like wondering who you are, where you fit in with the broader sense of society, whether you do or not. Um, and like the, the perfume show I was telling you about, um, another one of my motif things in several shows is um, being in another's shoes, you know, that saying, that experience, shared experience. And, but more precisely about that impossibility of knowing um, whether you do share, have a shared experience or whether you do can know one, one another, and I think that relates to um, there's a reconciliation movement in Australia about um, you know, narrowing the gap between um, non-indigenous and indigenous Australians and it's a reconciliation week and all this sort of stuff. But um, I think this uh, um, idea of um, not knowing one another, not knowing if we have a shared experience, I think it deals with uh, or relates with to the failure of that reconciliation movement. Because maybe we'll never understand one another or know one another. Some people uh, dislike Aboriginal um, because it um, can be used for Canadian, you know, Abri Canadian, Native Canadians use the word Aboriginal, Native Americans and other people groups. But, uh, and some people don't like Indigenous, some Native Australians don't like Indigenous as, as well. Um, but people uh, Aboriginal Australians have different terms for whatever location they're from. Like people from Queensland, they call themselves Murrays. Uh, people from New South Wales call, them, call themselves uh, Kuris. And Western Australians, South Australians are Noongars, right? so they have different names. Uh, using their own um, language to describe themselves.
usually deal with memories. Um, yeah, I did another show where it was a, um, the gallery, is a, a, they call them artist run initiatives. They're like spaces that are independently run by artists themselves, not, um, not a um, official gallery or whatever. But one of them was a house that three people lived in and they moved all their belongings out of the kitchen and lounge room, maybe another bedroom for a mall to one bedroom, and then the rest was the exhibiting space. So I had a show there and I tried to recreate my childhood home like, as best as I could and bought old couches and old kerosene powered fridges and um, some items I um, kept like diaries and drawings I did and old books that I kept and um, just filled it out. Uh, it used to smell as well like I just got like two litres of dead holes disinfectant. Um, you might have it here. It's real particular smell. Um, strong smell and I remember having dead hole baths all the time. I don't know why. <laughs> but I just threw all that in the bathroom and it, powerful, pungent smell went through the whole house and, um, and made a camera obscura thing for the, for the front door and then there was another front door like in this little space before you leave the house so it was like a little dark room and I just, you know, blacked it out and made a hole because I remember in a house which the house was pretty run down that I grew up in and there's a hole in the front door. And one day I noticed the traffic and people going past on the walls, upside down. You know? and it's like a bit of magic in the poverty.